the most interesting game from round five of the Sinkfield Cup was Hikaru Nakamura against Shakriya Mamadyarov, two players who are not afraid to go forward and get stuck into a battle. Before we look at the game, let me just uh, tell you that I'm doing a hangout on YouTube tonight at 7 p.m. UK time, and you'll find the link in the description. I'll be going through games, puzzles, and of course, taking your questions. And do join me live to see that. So 7 p.m. UK time tonight. Check out the link. Hope you'll join me. Okay, Nakamura against Mamadyarov. Opening choice of Mamadyarov, I found intriguing. He played the Tarash with black. Now, this is an opening that really isn't very fashionable at the moment. Kasparov had this in his repertoire in the early 1980s and scored some big successes with it until he met Karpov in their World Championship match in 1984. And that was when Kasparov decided to give up at the opening. Um, here, um, I mean, I was, I was just really surprised by this move from Nakamura. He played h3. Now, we're all told as beginners, you know, you don't use your pawns at the side of the board like that. You know, what does it actually do? And, well, he's played this before and he has a specific idea, but frankly, I'm pretty sceptical about this move. I think it weakens White's kingside. The main lines here are taking on c5, and in fact, the most popular move is bishop g5, as Karpov used to play. Anyhow, h3. Don't try this at home, folks. Um, 94 from Mamadyarov. I think straight away, knight hitting the outpost exposes some of the problems with h3, actually. Nakamura exchanged on c5. And you can see that if knight takes pawn, then knight takes g3, exploiting that pin. And you can see how the pawn move h3 has weakened white's pawn front. Now, of course, this is not um, <laughs> a problem to defend against. And Hikaru played bishop f4 to protect the pawn on g3. But even so, I think that says something already about white's opening. Mamadyarov exchanged on c3 and played bishop f5. And you can see with that exchange, well, both players now have an isolated pawn. And I don't believe that black has any difficulties in this position at all. And if that bishop reaches e4, blunting out the bishop on g2, then I start to favour black, definitely. Rook e8 played on the semi-open file g4 from Nakamura. Really interesting. So he is using his pawn move h3 to expand on the king side. Now, is this good or bad? Well, with the bishop on f4 and the bishop on g2, it's safe enough. But in the long term, white, of course, has to be very, very careful. So both players uh, developing. Queen b3 hits the d pawn. Now, if that's taken in the middle, then knight a5 is problematic. So you're attacking the queen, and the queen is supporting the bishop. Okay, it could go like this. In fact, black doesn't win a piece with this little tricky queen maneuver, but it's obvious that black has pretty good compensation for the pawn because without that light squared bishop, white's king looks very drafty. Back to this position, rook fd1. Instead, bring your rook in the middle and the rook comes over to support the pawn. And now black brings second rook into the game, looking at that pawn on c3. It's all very logical so far. But I don't think that white has a particularly good position here. Um, if I were black, I think I would be very, uh, very satisfied with the outcome of the opening. Bishop c7. Mamadyarov likes to look at his opponent's king. He likes to have a sniff of an attack and exchanging off this bishop for the bishop on b6, which wasn't doing very much, is very logical. So we get rid of a defender. 
Knight b3, b6 stops the knight coming into c5. And here's an interesting moment, which I think shows the inclination of uh, Mamadurov. He likes to attack. I quite like knight e5 in this position. And that knight wants to hop in on c4 and d3. I think this would have to be exchanged off. Um, and maybe the position's about equal, but well, I, I like those bishops. But instead, Mamadyarov looks to complicate the position and looks to chip away at this pawn front here, front of white's king. So, as I said, I think that shows the 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 um, yeah the attacking intent of the Azeri. C4 exploiting the pin. Uh, but both players are now in their element. And now d4. And bishop d5 check. That bishop is powerful on d5, so Mamadorov looks to exchange it off. And here, well, Nakamura could have taken on d4, but that would lead to a mass exchange of pieces and, and would wind up in a draw. But by this stage, Nakamura's thinking, okay... I've got chances as well, uh, because although, yes, Mamadyorov is trying to open up White's king, in fact, he doesn't have many pieces to attack on the king side, or any pieces. And particularly with the queen coming over, this means that White's king is actually pretty safe. And black has to take care. That's why I question Mamadyorov's decision to play f5, because he doesn't have many pieces in the attacking zone. And here, as I said before, this bishop is a very strong piece. We would like to exchange it off, but watch what happens if we do that. Split rooks. There's a problem. There you go. Split rooks, my trademark. Don't get split rooks. Here, well, white has won a pawn and has a, a, a superb position with this knight heading into e6. So that's why in this position... Mamadyarov connects the rooks. There we are. It's all very logical. Here's an interesting moment in the game. In St. Louis, the commentators there, um, Maurice Ashley, um, was making a big play of this position, saying, ah, oh, black has a great chance here. Knight b4. He thought, sorry, after this move, knight d2. Very logical. Uh, Hikaru swings the knight over to the king side. Here is where Maurice was saying, Knight b4. The engines say this is a good move. Um, and indeed, engines do think that uh, this is black's best possibility. But after the game, when Mamadyarov was questioned about this move, he said, yeah, sure, I, I saw knight b4. But he said instinctively he didn't want to move the knight so far away from the king side. And he felt that this was a bit loose not protected so if you're a computer you can get away with this you understand you can see the tactics straight away but but it's not a human move or it's not a Mamadyarov move and I understand what he's talking about it is a loose move no matter if the engines think this is the best and in fact if we go a little bit further on well you can see that white has a very nicely centralized position and let's play c5 and I think this is just highly unclear. I don't think white is worse in any way. So Mamadyarov was just being very practical. He said, well, I prefer to play rook f8, put some pressure here and keep the knight on a better square. But it's clear that uh, Nakamura has some initiative here. He's managed to bring his knight to the king side. He wants to play here. Now, they repeated the position a couple of times, but by this stage, Nakamura, I think very understandably, wants to play for a win. Um, I think what's what's great about these both these players is that they really strive to, to get the most out of the position. They're not afraid to complicate, to, to gamble as well. Sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't, but... Yeah, I like the intent of both players. King h8 from Mamadyarov. Bishops exchanged. And now I like the way 
that Nakamura has done this. If you remember in his game against Caruana, where Nakamura had a bishop, the light squared bishop, that was very loose. It never had proper support from a pawn. Um, and that was one of the reasons why Caruana had the advantage that that bishop could be hit all over the place, never found proper security. And you can see that Nakamura is doing the same thing here with this knight on c6. If only Namjorov could return the pawn to b7 to support the knight, then he would have security. So c5 opens up the, the c file looking at the knight on c6. And that connects the rooks. Takes and now rook e1. So white is very active here and looking at uh, coming down to the back rank. Rook f8, an unfortunate move. You don't want to split the rooks, but here I'm afraid needs must. Here Nakamura played queen e4, which looks like a, a very respectable move. You, you might want to play the knight back here to get in on g6. But queen e4 is actually inaccurate. Uh, king g2 is a better move. It's, it's a, a tidy move, I would say. And one of the reasons is, is that if black tries to drive away the knight from f5 with g6, then simply rook h1 is very unpleasant for black. Um, hitting the pawn on h6 so that if takes, then we can play g5 and this is uh, looking very unpleasant. Uh, let me go back. So in this position, queen e4. And now Mamadurov plays g6. Now, you know, both players a little bit short of time coming to, to the, the time control at move 40. And a, a critical moment, I, I think g6 is, is somehow a very brave move to play. Um, you know, you have to get the tactics absolutely right, and, and it's definitely the best move. The point is that here, knight takes h6 can be met by rook e7. Can't take here because of a check on e1, and then you take. So if the queen comes back to h1, looks extremely dangerous. In fact, black is okay here. I mean, there are a few ways out, but this is possible. And now king g7, just duck out of the way. And in fact, the knight isn't um, very well placed. Black wants to take here. If queen e4, then, well, this is a nice move. d3, a nice deflecting move. And when that's taken, queen takes f4. A few problems for the knight. In fact, it should be a, a draw after this. And then a check and, and well, basically everything gets traded off here and that's going to end in a draw. Um, there are a few more variations, but basically black is all right after knight h6. Now, instead of going for those complications, Nakamura decided to take on d4. And this leads to a draw and liquidation. Or liquidation and then a draw even. Forced sequence. Players reach a rook on pawn endgame where all the pawns, or most of the pawns, get traded off. And there is absolutely no way to squeeze anything out of this position. Not even if you're a Carlson. And some checks there. And the players agreed to a draw. I'll just keep going with those until the very end. And here is where they finally decided to draw an end to the game. Um, I thought it was a great battle, actually. Both players showed real uh, intent, wanted to make the most of their positions. Um, so uh, all games were drawn uh, in that fifth round. So there are still five players uh, at the top. Thursday is a free day in St. Louis. So they uh, resume battle on Friday. But remember, if you want to 
keep up with some more chess, then do check out my Hangout tonight, 7 p.m. UK time. You can see the link in the description. Do join me for lots of chat, questions, puzzles and games. It'll be great to see you. And do check out the playlist. If you want to see more enterprising games by Hikaru Nakamura and Shakriya Mamidiaro, do check out their playlists on the channel. They play some really entertaining stuff. Thanks for watching.